Okay, so let us continue our discussion. So in the last class, we uh, defined degree of freedom. Now, it is the number of independent coordinates that uh, we need to define the deformed shape of a body, right. So, now just imagine if we have a particle which is uh, at this location and then it moves on either direction, right. So, we have a particle here and let this position be marked as O, then uh, it can go to uh, either direction. So, it can move in this way or that way. So, but the maximum deformation it can uh, experience is, uh, let us mark it as A. So, it is on either side, the displacement is A. Now, uh, so it can go to the two extremes on either side and then um, this point let us mark it as A prime and B prime. So, I repeat once more we have a particle and then uh, this particle uh, is at O position we call this position uh, mean or equilibrium. So, from this equilibrium position or mean position, it can go either side to a maximum extent of A. Obviously, if we see the motion of this particle, so it goes to say first the right extreme, then at that point obviously, the velocity of the particle is 0, then it returns back and then go to the other side. And then that um, deformation or that motion continues. Now, this type of motion is called periodic motion. Now, what is the periodic motion? It is basically a motion that repeats itself, right. So, it is a motion uh, that repeats itself uh, and obviously uh, in equal time interval. As we progress in this course, we will see for a structure also, we will define these period or the equal time interval in which the structure in its uh, uh, free vibration mode, we will define free vibration. Uh, how does it repeat that motion? We will discuss. For the time being, we have uh, a particle at mean position and there are different examples. For example, if you take a simple pendulum or even the planetary motion actually, these are uh, some of the examples uh, and then in this case, what happens if you just take a instant say at this position. So, from the mean position say this distance is x. Now, obviously, as the particle moves in the right uh, direction we have to bring it back to the mean position that is how it will repeat itself. So, there will be a force acting otherwise it will continue in the right hand side and it will go forever. So, there is a force and that force is proportional to the deformation. Obviously, this force is equal to k times x. So, what is k? k is a constant. And how do you define k? Just imagine if x equal to 1, f equal to k. That means, it is the amount of force necessary for unit displacement. And in fact, in structural engineering, we will call k as stiffness. It will act as a restoring force to bring the structure back once it uh, 
experience some uh, vibration. We also know that this F is equal to m times a acceleration. And uh, before we move forward, one more important point to be noted that this k, the magnitude of uh, force F is equal to kx, but it acts in the opposite direction of the deformation. That is how the uh, particle will uh, come back again to its main position and move the other side. Now, uh, from uh, the previous discussion, we have uh, noticed that this force is nothing but the mass times acceleration. Now, obviously, if I combine these two, what we get? We get mass times acceleration is equal to minus k times x. And then uh, we can uh, express A as minus k by m times x. And this k by m, we call it omega square. So, omega is the frequency. So, what we ultimately get? A is equal to minus omega square x. What does it mean? A is proportional to x. Now, if we can imagine a motion where the acceleration when the particle is at a distance of x from its mean position and if the acceleration is proportional to the displacement, such a motion, we call it a periodic motion. Right. So, that is the definition. Now, let me further define a simple harmonic motion. In short form, we call SHM. So, in case of SHM, what we have just what we proved that uh, this condition is satisfied. Okay. So, now what we know our acceleration is nothing but the second derivative of x with respect to time. So, we have the expression for um, acceleration and then uh, when we combine this um, expression for acceleration in terms of um, the second derivative of uh, displacement and what we get earlier minus omega square x, then what we get d2 x dt2 is equal to minus omega square x. Or in other words, x double dot plus omega square x is equal to 0. So, that is the equation we get for this type of motion. Obviously, the moment we try to solve uh, this equation, uh, we have to integrate it and uh, we need some uh, conditions that we will define as we progress. Now, uh, for the time being, so first thing uh, we have a motion where acceleration is proportional to this displacement, then we call it a simple harmonic motion. And then for that, we have derived the equation of motion. As we progress in this course, we will see uh, a uh, structure also vibrates. Uh, with similar type of equations and we will actually solve those and uh, we will see how we can uh, find the response of a structure using these type of uh, differential equation. Now, what we have d 2 x d t 2 plus we have k by m times x is equal to 0. So, we can modify this equation slightly. So, what we do? We multiply both sides by 2 times dx dt. So, what we have here is 
Now, if you look at this expression here, we can write it as d dt of dx dt whole square and this is equal to minus omega square and uh, we have this k by m we replace it as omega square and then d dt of x square right. Then uh, we can integrate both sides. So, what we will effectively get is dx dt whole square is equal to minus omega square x square. Obviously, there will be a constant of integration and then we will have c. What is this quantity? dx dt it is the velocity of the particle at x. Now, if you look at the problem statement, when this particle starts moving from its mean position and reaches the extreme either a prime or b prime, so either a prime or b prime, then at that point what happens? The velocity, so at x equal to a, what we have? We have dx dt that is the velocity at x equal to a this is equal to 0 and that is the reason uh, it comes back uh, towards its mean position. Now, if I satisfy that condition, what we get is obviously dx dt, the left hand side will be 0 square is equal to minus omega square a square plus c. So, we get the value of c which is nothing but omega square square. Obviously, the moment we get the expression of velocity, then what we have here is dx dt whole square is equal to omega square within bracket a square minus x square. So, that is the expression of velocity for this case. So, what we have v is nothing but square root of omega square a square minus x square. So, we can actually take this omega square out of the square root. So, we can write omega then square root of this quantity. Okay. So, now let us move forward. So, what we have derived is dx dt is equal to omega square root of a square minus x square. Now, if we again solve this, so what we have is this equation. Now, obviously, both side of this equation we can easily integrate and then on the left hand side if we integrate what we have is sin inverse x by a and on the right hand side we have omega t and then again some constant will come we call it phi. What is phi? It is called initial phase. So, what we get from this is the displacement x is equal to a times sin omega t plus phi. So, that is the solution of the differential equation we have. Obviously, there are other ways also we can solve as we progress we will see how we can actually solve this uh, differential equation uh, in a slightly different way. But uh, what we have now is uh, 
the solution of a particle when it undergoes a simple harmonic motion. Now, if you look at the nature of the solution, how does it look like? So, we have on the x axis So, what we have is time, let me redraw it, it is not vertical. So, we have time here and then at t equal to 0, it starts from the mean position obviously takes the shape of a sinusoid and it continues. So, if I draw the tangent here, we basically get the x dot at 0 and this maximum value is the amplitude. So, here we have x of t and then this time is the time period for this simple harmonic motion. So, what is t? It is nothing but 2 pi by omega. Now, omega is the omega is the frequency in radian per second. Obviously, we can also write t is equal to 1 by f, where f in hertz, right. Now, if you look at the expression, so time period is 2 pi square root of mass divided by force per unit displacement. So, that is the time period we get. Now, we will see in case of structure vibrating under say earthquake or wind, uh, we will also have some natural frequency just like here we have uh, omega, we will have natural frequency and there also it will, will estimate the corresponding time period. Now, up to this point it is fine. So, we started with a simple harmonic motion. We derived the equation and uh, this is a very simple way to solve the equation of motion. And then what we derived is the expression for time period. So, if we continue uh, to investigate the energy of the particle, then let us see obviously the total energy will be equal to the summation of kinetic energy. and potential energy. Right. Now, let us consider that, so let us consider the particle <coughs> moves dx from x. So, the work done is equal to force times. So, in this case, what is the displacement? It is dx. Therefore, the differential work done dw is nothing but force f 
times dx and obviously it has to be minus because that is how uh, it will uh, bring back the particle to its mean position. So, what we have here is uh, recall what is A in this case? A is minus omega square x right and therefore, what we have dw is equal to <coughs> minus m a that is the force times d x. Now, if I combine, so what we have d w is equal to m omega square x d x. So, if we integrate this function d w is integration 0 to x m omega square x d x and therefore, what we get is w is nothing but half m omega square x square and this is what we call the potential energy in the system E p. So, that is the potential energy. So, what about kinetic energy E? Kinetic energy E k is equal to half we have the mass m times v square. Now, recall we have derived the expression for v and that was omega times square root of a square minus x square. So, it will be half m omega square then a square minus x square. So, the total energy E is equal to the summation of kinetic energy E k plus potential energy E p. So, what we have half m omega square a square minus x square and then plus half m omega square x square. So, ultimately if you see we have this one and this half m omega square x square will get cancelled. So, we will be left with half m omega square a square. So, that is the energy. Now, if you look at this expression this is constant. So, what it shows that during the motion the total energy of the system is also conserved. So, that is the take away point of this entire discussion. So, if we have a particle which experiences simple harmonic motion then in that case we have the energy of the system is conserved. So, we can uh, write down the expression for omega in terms of f. So, further simplify this equation. So, you can show that uh, this will be 2 pi square m f square a square. So, that is the expression of total uh, energy in terms of frequency in hertz. I just leave this an exercise for you just try it at your end. Now, if we move forward, so if we consider say a simple pendulum So, what we have in case of a simple pendulum, we have a bob which is suspended from the anchor point. In this case, say this is the anchor point 0 and the length of the string in this case is L. So, this bob moves in this curve path and then at some instant we have this angle theta. So, obviously, the load will act 
vertically downward. So, this is m g acting downward and then uh, what we have is uh, a tension in the string. So, how to derive uh, the equation of motion in this case? So, the bob tries to move from its uh, mean position that is the vertical position and then as it moves further it experiences a torque tau that brings back uh, this weight m g to its mean position. Now, obviously, we can write down the expression for this torque which is nothing but say this distance is x. So, we have a force acting downward that is m g and about this anchor point O the lever arm is x. So, it is m g x and because it is acting opposite to the direction of motion. So, we put a negative sign. Now, we can easily conclude that x is what it is L sin theta. So, what we get is minus m g L sin theta. Then we can also estimate this torque as I alpha where I is the moment of inertia and then alpha is the angular acceleration. So, what is I? I is mass times this length of the string L square and what is alpha? Alpha is d 2 theta d t 2. So, what we have in this case tau is nothing but m L square then d 2 theta d t 2. So, if I combine these two what we get is m L square d 2 theta d t 2 is equal to or I can write plus m g L sin theta is equal to 0. And then we can further simplify. So, d 2 theta d t 2 plus we have g by L sin theta is equal to 0. Then if we consider a very small theta obviously for small theta then sin theta is approximately equal to theta. So, in that case we can modify this expression. So, what we have g by L times theta. So, the equation of motion in this case is theta double dot plus again this is omega square theta is equal to 0. So, you can see the expression for equation of motion in this case we have again a single degree of freedom and the nature of this governing equation of motion is again the same what we had earlier and in this case omega is equal to square root of g by L and t is equal to 2 pi by omega. So, what we have 2 pi times square root of L by G. And in fact, uh, at the plus 2 level we have physics lab and there we use this expression to find out the gravitational acceleration at a particular place. So, what we do? We use a pendulum, then we measure the time period and we know the length of the pendulum L. So, from this expression we can actually find out the gravitational acceleration. This experiment all of us we have done. As we progress we will see in structural vibration also we will have similar type of equation of motion and we have to solve them to find out the response. In this case the response will be theta of t. So, it has only 1 degrees of freedom and that will tell the position vector as well as uh, uh, the velocity and acceleration of the particle. These are the informations we need if we design this pendulum. So, in our next class we will continue 
with some example of simple harmonic motion and we will see how we can solve this problem and find out the state when a particle experience simple harmonic motion. So, we will solve these equations and uh, we will interpret those results, we will see how to conclude their nature of motion. Thank you very much. Thank you.